Oh dear Comcast, my apologies for that. That was Comcast rearing its ugly head. That means I have to stitch that together both in Twitch and out. Oh, it's so annoying. Not that I think it's really annoying. Radiant structure by the way, now that I've lost my train of thought, because I did just get disconnected from Twitch. <sighs> oh, Drow comes in here, gets caught out. She's trying to run away. She's got the haste mode, but now she does get picked up. So she's still trying to run away, just not gonna happen. She gets caught out. Sound whiff hits her head on. Ice path. Nope. No chance of escaping there. PL. PL's still in here, he's just gonna bash down, but Invoke is able to get out of there barely, and now the call down happens, and I'm not sure if Phantom Lancer just didn't notice it, but he stays there and overstays his welcome just a little bit too long, and now that's PL down once again. PL and Drow for that matter, both of the enemy carries, both of the enemy carries just died, what are you doing? Why would you go in there if the enemy car- oh. I'm, I'm not sure, are the Dire trying to throw this? They still have a severe gold advantage, but XP has turned around so thoroughly. The Radiant are defending this so thoroughly. This is almost absurd that the Radiant are playing this passively. They're winning team fight after team fight. They're killing the enemy carries. They're out farming them. And the scary thing about that right now is that they're still managing to lose towers. <laughs> meant to do that. Now, if you'll excuse me, just one moment. Looking at the items right now, I mean, the Radiant, who has an item advantage? Does anyone have brown boots? Yay, no one has brown boots anymore. And actually, the Gyro has boots of travel at this point, so Gyro's going to be able to split push a lane if he really needs to. Plus, he has his Crystallis now, so what is he going to be going into? Or no, excuse me, Crystallis. Oh my god, that blade for me to call that Crystallis. Oops. Shadow Blade out on Pudge and Drow Ranger as an escape technique. Meanwhile, the Radiant going to start pushing this mid lane. Age is going to expire in three minutes, and in three minutes, the question there is, is it going to be enough? Boots of Travel now coming out on Invoker, so they're going to start pushing more aggressively. They have the ability to split push. Meanwhile, the Dire in this bot lane, they are in a very good position to split push. PL comes in here. Is he going to get caught out for it? He's been spotted. They still have that gym up. He's trying to run away, but it's simply not fast enough. Stun after stun, and he's going to get broken down. TP coming in from Gyrocopter on there. Slardar TP right on the racks. Tower's already gone down. Pudgeup going to come out, find the Slardar. The Slytherin Crush going to keep him alive for a little bit longer. Ranged Barracks goes down first, quickly followed by Radiance Melee Barracks, and now the bot lane completely gone. Mid lane in the meantime, also completely gone. And if you're the Radiant right now, it's 46 minutes in, and you still haven't killed a single tower. That's right, you haven't killed a single tower. How does it feel to not kill a single tower? At the 46 minute mark. Oh dear. That's what I have to say about this. Oh dear. Now Drow Ranger coming in, gets picked up by the Tornado. This time, Karakras comes out from Nyx. He goes in, Jarrow Cops rock and rush, gets Pudge. Kahlo goes down. It looks like Jarrow already down, actually. Now Pudge trying to run away. PL is still down, actually, about to respawn for a second. Now Pudge trying to go to Rocket Barge Pops once again. Slither Crush going to keep him in place. And Impale as well, going to stop him from going anywhere at all. That's, again, four players going down for the dive compared to the one for the Radiant. And, oh my god, actually, now as well, Weaver gets taken down. So forget what I said about a four out of five team wipe. That is a team wipe for the Dire. And this is just absurd at this point, that the Radiant are still managing to lose towers. They haven't lost a team fight in like 15 minutes, and they're still losing towers. And it's the 47 minute mark. The absurdity behind that statement that... The Radiant are either just complete failures at pushing lanes, or they are trying to just defend, 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 and not push lanes. It's not like they have a completely late game oriented team. They're playing against a PL, and they're playing it late game like it's not going to happen. The absurdity behind what's happening right now is just rearing its head, and the scary fact is the Radiant are actually the ones in the superior position. They've lost two lanes, and they're still the ones at the superior position. That is 
absurd. That's all that can describe it. Absurd. 30 seconds left on that Aegis. They're gonna start pushing that mid lane. Slar or yeah, Slardar and Warlock leading the charge here. Not even ready to bother pushing any lanes. They're actually almost at the river. First time, and I don't know how many minutes that they've almost been to the river with a creep wave. Meanwhile, top lane is start pushing again. PL got the illusions in there. Gonna start moving down the line. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Tornado pickup from uh, Invoker. Unfortunately, that's a false Phantom Lancer, so none of it exactly matters. Now in comes Drow Ranger, Invisible Nyx as well comes in. No impales yet. There's the impale. Call down comes out from Gyro, and that's a very dead Drow Ranger getting caught out. Gyro rotates in through the jungle. Oh, did they see the Weaver? No, I don't think they did. In the meantime, though, here comes Pudge. They find the Slargar. He goes down. Here comes PL. Nyx Assassin and Pale Heaven catches two of them, actually. BKB gets popped by Gyrocopter. Another call down. Golem drop as well from Warlock and boom with the little old Dire team one day. Now Weaver coming in, time lapse happens, he's gonna try and Sakuchi his way out of here. Will any stun come out? Sunstrike barely missing from Invoker. Tornado comes out, will catch him, Tornado does catch Weaver. Gyro's still pursuing, Sakuchi comes out once again. He's barely out running of him, but a regen rune probably gonna save the life of Weaver here as he is much faster if that's Sakuchi and he's able just to get out of that situation. Coddle already away. And oh dear, again though, they lost three heroes for one, they killed a Slardar, but they still lost three. It's 48 to 29 right now. The gold advantage is slowly turning around. It's only 10k at this moment, whereas XP is up to 30,000 for the Radiant team. 30,000! And they haven't taken a tower. Let me say that again. They haven't taken a tower. Not a single one. Top T1, still have health. Mid T1, still, well, like one sixth. Bot T1, nearly dead. But for. <laughs> we're at the 49 minute mark. They haven't killed a tower, but they have an absurd XP advantage and an absurd gold disadvantage. And they're still winning team fights. <laughs> and looking at the team fight of the two teams. I mean, arguably, you would think that the Radiant would actually have the superior team fight. They have the Golem drop, they have Slytherin Crush, they have Invoker with his lockdown, they have Nyx Assassin with Impale, they have Gyro with Lowdown. It's a very, very good team fight oriented team, and they've been losing that the past few moments. In come, and they come once again, Invoker gonna drop that gem. The gem's still on the ground here, BKB gets popped. Now he's gonna push forward. He's gonna push the gem. The gem still on the ground, actually. Call down comes out, Drow about to get caught in there ever so slightly. Instead, it's actually PL who gets caught in. He gets caught out by Slider. He goes down, and now Gyro is godlike. And that gem, that gem is still on the ground. Gym a true side. Ah, who needs that? And is Pudge gonna go after it? Nope. He might just go after Gyro here. He goes for it. Rock comes out. There's the dismember. Is it going to be enough? Gyro's taking damage. In comes Sunstrike. Can hit head on. There's the Oh, but a divine rapier! A rapier! Off of that! Gy or off of that gyro. Now Slardar pursuing. Blinks in. Gets the Slytherin Crush. Will Pudge stay alive long enough? There's the path from Invoker. He goes down to Invoker. Divine Rapier gets dropped once again. Gets picked up by the Slardar. That's a 500 damage Slardar. Divine Rapier is in the field. I didn't even notice that that was in the field. He has a Heaven's Halbeard and a Divine Rapier right now, but he's just going to fall back and give that to Gyro. Does Gyro have buyback? Yes, he does. Full team wipe once Dyer's again for the Dyer here, and is under attack. if you're the Dyer right now, it's 53 to 31. What is this absurdity? Dyer's courier has been killed. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's Courier actually getting taken down, as you just heard. Taken down, excuse me. Tower's trying to take damage, the Forge Spirit's pushing that. So again, the first T1 of the game about to go down here for the Radiant. Dyer's and we're going to see an immediate, I, we've already seen an immediate change in that gold graph, actually. It has just turned almost exponentially right around. XP is verging on 40,000 at this point, and right now, if you're the Dyer, what is going through your head? Like, what can you think? This, uh, your early game had gone so well as the Dyer. You pushed down towers one after the other. You took two of their lanes. There are mega creeps in mid and bot lane. And you are still having problems. You can't push that final T1. Even with the T3 tower down, they haven't been able to push this Rax in the last five minutes or so. And we are at the 52 minute mark now. We are rapidly approaching the one hour mark. 
Oh, Weaver has to know what's going on. He has to realize there's a Sun Druid. Thankfully, he does. He's going to time lapse his way out of there and retreat back the other direction. Roshan has and in the meantime, Roshan, Roshan, excuse me, not Roshan. Roshan gets caught out by the Dire. Age is going to get picked up by Drow Rangers. They are essentially admitting at this point that they are using Drow Ranger as their carry and Phantom Lancer as their pusher. He even has a heart, just to add on top of that, as well as a Diffusal Blade. Coddle Blast about to come out Radiant and annihilate this entire poor creep wave. Good endeavor, do you deserve that? Rock comes out temporarily from Pudge. And now they're trying to push this bot lane, which I haven't really thought. Oh, but in the meantime, we were trying to push that top lane. He gets caught out. He's going to get taken down by Gyro. Does Gyro have his divine once again? No, he doesn't. Sardar still has that divine. Golem drop comes out. Not going to hit anyone. Call down happens. Draw Ranger is right on out of there. Here comes the Coddle Blast. Barely doing any damage anymore. And the entire creep wave just gets annihilated. But in the meantime, top lane is pushing in. The Radiant are trying to respond to that last creep going down here. Catapults are doing damage to the Rax itself. Call right there. And in come the Radiant to reinforce their mid and top lane while the Dire push in that bot lane once again. Coddle Blast about to come in here once again. Hits the Creep Wave and is head on. Now, cat last Catapult goes down in that top lane. Creep Wave reinforcing. Mid lane taking a lot of damage here. First T4 tower, tower goes down. Drow Ranger running. trying to retreat out here. Gets impaled. Barely being seen. Goes down. Aegis gets popped. Hydra trying to get out of here now. Rock and Barrage already came out. There's the Aegis popping. They go back for her this time. Invoker trying to get away from an angry Drow. Impale comes out from him. Will it be enough? Yes, it will. Drow taking so much damage. Goes down. GG being called by Pudge, actually. Now, top racks taking damage. Mega creeps now available for the Dire. The question now is, did Pudge just call GG because they've lost, or did they call GG because they've won? At this situation, you have to be wondering. From a caster's perspective, this is going ridiculously bad for the Dire. There's a, they only have a 5k gold advantage at this point, a 30,000 XP advantage for the Radiant. And now the Radiant are just killing them left and right. Buyback from PL, this is their last desperate hope. Top racks are gone. They need to push this last T4 tower and take out the Ancient. That'll be GG. But it's almost surprising to say the Radiant are in a, an amazing position. They have superior team fight. They've been abusing it, absolutely abusing it the entire game. But the thing about the Dire, and the one thing they haven't really been abusing, is that they have superior split push. They have PL. They have Coddle. They have Weaver. They have, I mean, Drow Ranger. They can all split push lanes very effectively. And they just haven't been making use of that very effectively at all. Mid lane's pushing in here. Top lane also pushing in. But now there are mega creeps on all three lanes compared to non mega creeps. So these lanes are going to be pushing in no matter what. Ah, uh, the charging horses come out once again from Coddle, because calling it the Coddle Blast just isn't nice enough. And in the meantime, the Dire is just going to back off and let the spot lane push in. I'm almost curious as to the fact that they haven't given Dire his um, Divine Reaper back. It's interesting they haven't done so. Sardar actually almost died there. He still has the Divine himself and quite a bit of gold, whereas Gyro has 8k of gold. What does he need? He only needs 1k for buyback. He has a lot of reliable gold. Now the courier gonna make a secret shop run here. What if for? Is this courier going to grab? Scary courier. is going to grab a Reaver for our Gyro player, who's going to be grabbing a Satanic. As if he didn't have enough life still as it is. So a BKB Satanic and a MKB out for Gyro, and only a 4 second BKB for that matter. He's used up all of his BKB. Still though, Black King Bar useful in pretty much all situations. He's got both bars, King Bars for that matter. Now the Dire priming for yet another push on the Radiant base here. 57 minute mark. Drow Ranger about to get caught out. Homing Missile coming in. No Slither Crush have yet. There's the Slither Crush. Call down and hit Jow. Pretty much head on. Slider gets the final kill. Weaver gets picked up by the Tornado. In they come. There's the Meteor Drop. Pudge gonna BKB and do as much damage to that T4 as he can. He's still dying. He's still dying. He does go down. Ice Bath comes out from Revoker. Now PL gets picked up. Weaver goes down. Tower still close to dying. The tower goes down. Ancient is now fully exposed. PL trying to get himself out of here. Will he be fast enough? 
He's able to heal himself up fully there. Heart of Tomas doing the job. Is he going to stay alive? No, he's not. He goes down. And now that's a full team wipe once again for the Dire, but the Ancient is now fully exposed here for the Radiant. In comes the bottom creep wave. In comes the mid creep wave. In comes the top creep wave. And what can you really do if you're the Radiant here? You're forced to camp your own base, trying to deny the creep waves from pushing. Gyro is literally just tanking creeps right now as Radiant's top lane pushes in, bot lane attack. pushes in. Mid lane is right outside the base. Warlock trying to deny that for as long as he can, but he took way too much damage. Now Slargar is back with a Hyper Stone. <laughs> I have 3.4k gold still on him. Buyback is pretty much universally ready for the Radiant, as it is not for the Dire, and they're not even bothering to use it. They've... why would they? They've only lost one T1 tower. What threat are they really at of losing? I mean, right now the Dire, they're sitting so pretty, but... If this doesn't go their way, if the Radiant actually decides they feel like pushing, if they push out the lanes and get a good position, then these towers that are in front of them are just going to melt, and I mean absolutely melt. Slidar has a Divine, he has a Mjolnir now. Gyrocopter still has a Satanic, his MKB, he has Boots of Travel and a BKB. Invoker has a Scythe of Vice, a Yule Scepter, and an Axe at this point. He has so much versatility to him now. He has so many, so much lockdown. It's almost absurd. And now Nyx just picked up a level two Dagon pretty much instantaneously. So we're gonna see burst DPS Nyx trying to come out. But at this point in the game, Nyx doesn't actually have enough burst DPS to actually burst anyone down. He'll do a substantial amount of damage, but it's just not going to be enough to, I mean, kill a firm. <laughs> Now the Dyer are setting up once again for yet another push. They've already smoked. They're sitting outside the base. They're waiting for whatever ambush they can. Oh, Coddle actually gets spotted by the Sentry Ward. And it looks like Pudge as well. Pudge goes in right under that Sentry Ward. He gets spotted. Here comes the Slardar. In comes the Tornado. Gonna catch three of them. Fall down happens. BKB gonna pop the last one for Pudge. Lots of damage coming out from Gyro. Arrows coming down from Warlock, or well, the spells coming down from Warlock. And he just gets man moded by Gyro and Slardar. In comes Coddle through the bot lane here. They're trying to deal damage to the Ancient. In comes the Swarm. They're starting to damage that Ancient. Coddle taking a lot of damage. Weaver goes in. He goes down. Now Coddle's just trying to escape in this situation. Meanwhile, PL pushing top lane. All of the buildings are gone. The creep wave is pushing in once again. The Radiant are gonna be forced to sit back and defend their Ancient for another few moments here. Warlock unable to actually stay in the fight. He needs to back out. He just doesn't have the help. Black Cannon is save the bloody day. Brought to you by Gyrocopter. Pretty much annihilates the entire creep wave instantaneously. Top creep wave still there. Mid lane trying to push out. It's 67 to 31, and oh my god. <laughs> the Dire, even though they've lost team fight after team fight, they did exactly what they needed to do, and they are still in the great position, but again, if they do something stupid, if the lanes push out, if the Radiant get the upper hand, the towers that are in their way are going to melt. And I mean absolutely melt. And a Divine... There are two Divines on the field. Two Divines! One Divine just wasn't enough when you are the Radiant. Unless I'm seeing things. In which case, where did that Divine go? There it is. Gyro's got his Divine back. <laughs> Top lane pushing in once again. Bot lane pushing in once again. This is the never-ending game. The Radiant are just continuing to try and defend this. PL about to respawn. The Radiant... Or the Dire... What? The Dire have two of their players just sitting in base. Weaver gonna buy some smokes here. I... I, I mean, has Pudge just given up? Has Pudge resolve, or resolved to the fact that this is going to be a GG for them? There we go, they do wake up. Looks like they're gonna move out of base here. Meanwhile, Coddle just out in the field here. Still trying to keep that bottom lane pushing in. What's the point? They don't have mega creeps. Their wave or their lane will never push out unless they forcefully push it out. And unfortunately, forcefully pushing it out is very, very challenging to do. As the creep waves will melt in moments, and even with support of heroes, this is going to be bad. Is this real life? <sighs> <laughs> 
Waiting on Roche to respawn, that's what this has come to. It's not just waiting until Roshan respawns and then going and Roshing, it's going to Rosh and waiting for him to respawn. That's what this has come to. This is the advantage the Dyer are looking for. Another little bit of gold, another little bit of Rosh. And at this point, the gold advantage has fully turned out. XP of 40,000 XP advantage. 40 Immortality. flipping thousand. I remember at TI3 there was a quote from one of the casters that in Chinese Dota you do not push until you have a 20,000 gold XP advantage and the Aegis and right now this is just absurd. The Radiant they have a 40,000 XP advantage. They have the gold advantage now. The only thing they don't have is the Aegis. What they do have is two divines. Not one, not zero, two. And they're working on getting more as far as I can tell. Nyx Assassin still just has his dagger, but he's slowly upgrading it whenever he can with gold while keeping his buyback up, I would presume, which doesn't actually have up at the moment. So if Nyx goes down, he's going to be down for a while. Call down, come down. Brow gets caught in it, as well as PLPL PL more correctly straight in it. So PL has to back off already. Now Botley pushing in. Call of Venice. There's the Golem drop. Tornado lands. Meteor Strike not far behind, Kyle trying to get out of there, he gets dagged down by Nyx, Pudge trying to run away, almost runs right into the Meteor actually, but instead he rotates back around to mid, here they come, they're gonna try for another push, Weaver goes in, looking for an opening, Sakuchi wears off, now he gets caught out, Scythe the Vice gets bobs. already the Yule Scepter's gone, so now it's Invoker's trying to solo him, Told Staff and Felons again, there's the time lapse, trying to keep him alive, meanwhile Pudge in the mid lane gets taken down, Draw Ranger already down, Coddle already down for that matter. Now Weaver's trying to escape so much damage though. Slardar comes in. That's a dead, dead Weaver. Only Cod or PL is still alive. He's trying to push into the bot lane. That's going to get denied. He gets damage amplified. He can't run away anymore. Slardar comes in. He's about to completely murder PL with one bar of health left. This is so absurd. It is 72 to 31 right now at the 64 minute mark. This is still not over. Another full team wipe. What is even going on anymore? The Radiance... This is a situation where I have to look at this, and as a caster at this point, Dyer's I have to say, are the Radiants just not trying to push? I mean, I realize it's mega creeps. It's hard to come back Dyer's when there are mega creeps knocking on your door, fallen. where you have to balance all lanes at the exact Radiance same time. But in this situation, attack. they've won team fight after team fight. They have an absurd gold advantage. An absurd... Well, not an absurd gold advantage yet, but that's still... That's getting there. They have a 10,000 gold advantage now. 40,000 XP advantage. The lanes are still pushing in. Oh, Ancient's actually Ancient taking a lot of damage here. Attack. Meanwhile, mid T1 just went down. Mid T2 is Dyer's melting. That is Gyro and Warlock pushing this, and for another 10 seconds or so, there won't be any major heroes up. Now Gyro pushing in. Black Cannon comes out. Creep Wave is going to melt. Coddle is right there trying to keep this wave pushing out, but they're insisting that it continues going the direction that it's going. TP out from Gyrocopter, now Invoker and Warlock are going to walk their way out. Blink in from Coddle, actually, going to mana leak the Warlock here. That's not a nice thing to do. And he's just going to grab that in this room, no problem. Oh, he actually does get spotted out still. So never mind, that is a problem. Either way, Warlock just going to happily back off here. The Dyer going to push in once again, pushing that mid lane in very aggressively. Gyro, in the meantime, pushing this top lane. He's still not six slotted. He's going for whatever sixth slot item that he can. Slardar, on the other hand, very six slotted. He has, I mean, he slots that Blink Dagger, and in my opinion, he's better off keeping it because it's Slither and Crush and his ability for initiation. So, Slardar, though, with a Divine Rapier. Gonna push out that bot lane ever so slightly. Meanwhile, top lane gonna get pushed in by Collier. And now the Dyer are really starting to abuse the fact that they can split push, and they can split push like crazy. So this is still not done. The Radiant just unable to push whatsoever. And we still have another 20 minutes in this match. Now the Dyer still trying to push in. Missile comes in. It's seeking that punch. Will he be able to run away? Yes, he will. The Radiant not even gonna bother pursuing. As instead that, the Dyer tried to push in through mid. Weaver going straight for the Ancient here. Gonna try and deal whatever damage he can. Instead, he's gonna time lapse and just try and get out of there. Coddle gonna blink his way out of there. This time, one of them does get caught out, and it's gonna be a rather brutal one. 
Golem is getting, or both Golems get dropped, and Aghanim is now out in the field for Warlock. And I'll probably start working on a refresher our Baptist. In the meantime, Drow Ranger over Steam gets taken down, does a little bit more damage to the Ancients. But in the meantime, what is even going on? Where are these players dying? I can't even tell. But Pudge and Weaver are going to go down alongside the Drow Warlock. Or, uh, no, Drow Ranger, excuse me. Drow Warlock. Oh boy. Coddle and PL trying to do whatever they can. Peel's actually just farming the enemy jungle right now. Coddle gonna go back and try and push this top lane. Coddle and, or PL in the meantime, gonna try and push this mid lane if he can. Looks like he might just farm jungle a little bit more. And this is so absurd. <laughs> PL is basically six slot at this point. He can sell the Fusal Blade, he can sell the TP scrolls, he can, well, he can sell the Axe for that Ogre Club, excuse me, at that point. But he just needs his items. I mean, he's about to get a Black King Bar, which is too little, too late for that matter. It's 68 minutes into the match. BKB would have been good earlier on. To be fair, BKB can still be good on simply because of the amount of team fights that the Radiant have. As long as they can counter some of that team fight, then that's a little bit longer that PL will be alive. Now, in the meantime, bot lane about to start pushing out. Mid lane trying to push out. Call away to deny that. Uh, absolutely. This has just gotten so absurd. The Dire sitting back and farming 70 minute game getting called out by Drow Ranger here. And this is still going. <laughs> now if you'll excuse me, there are some ice cubes in front of me and they have water. Thankfully, I was able to miss that entire moment without even having to worry. Excuse me. Don't mind that. Either way now, this is still the desperate game of the Radiant trying to hold the lanes at bay as long as they can. Because it's still full mega creeps, still full mega creeps. Let me reiterate that's still pushing in. What can you really do against mega creeps who continuously push lanes, continuously push your ancient, while you're trying to push the enemy? You got rid of their entire mid lane in one fell or fell swoop. All they needed was one good push, and they got rid of two towers. And that's what I'm talking about. If the dire fuck up right now, if the dire make one mistake, this will go so far against them so quickly. They won't even have time to react. As respawn times get longer, if they don't have buyback gold, then they're gonna be deep in a puddle they didn't want to be in. I do believe. Oh, this one's are just barely outside of each other's range. Now the Dire are gonna try pushing in. They're gonna try split pushing once again. Watching extend his way a little bit too far. BKB gets bumped and goes after the next. This never happens. Is there any ability to stop that? No, there won't be. There's the Golem drop. Both Golems coming down. Weaver strike not far behind. About to hit that punch. Final kill goes to Slardar here. Now he's pursuing. We were gonna get out of as fast as he can. PL in the meantime gets caught out. He pops that BKB. Will it be enough? No, simply not be. PL goes down. We were gonna come back into Captain Cannabis going after Slardar. But that damage combined. Oh my lord. He has a Satanic now. Peel comes in here once again, or not Peel, Kala comes in here once again, getting pursued by the starter. They blink right away from each other, actually. And this is the game of the Radiant, trying to push out the waves once again, because here comes that creep wave, pushing right onto the Ancient. That was a 4 out of 5 team wipe still, so as long as they keep pushing, they'll be in a good advantage. They need to keep pushing, and that's going to be the one interesting part going into this. I mean, the Dire, how could they possibly lose this? Radiance Ancient is under attack. Either way, bot lane pushing in here once again. The Radiant gonna have to deny that. Mid lane gonna push in here shortly. Top lane gonna push in as soon as the wave is gone. This is just absurd, and the Radiant are still defending this. 
Terra's gonna push on ahead. What is he going to do? There's no courier, so it looks like he's just gonna go to Secret Shop. When did their courier even go down? I couldn't tell you. Real question is, what is he going to buy? Radiance also, I mean, Ancient uh, um, is uh, under um, attack. Um, 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 right, so Gyro now has two divine rapiers. Two divine rapiers. <laughs> Two divine rapiers. Oh my lord, this is absurd. This has gotten beyond absurd for that matter. Drow Ranger is still not six slotted yet. She's working on it, but she's still not there yet. At this point, he is six slotted. Gyrocopter cannot give any more. He is completely six slotted with two divine rapiers, which is just crazy. Mid lane's actually going to push out a fair amount here, but there's so many creeps heading its way, it's going to turn around very quickly. Bot lane, same story. The Dire, in the meantime, are about to do Roshan. In fact, they are already doing Roshan. Drow Ranger are probably going to be able to solo that for that matter. Pudge going to come in for the assist anyway. Is this the fourth, fifth, or sixth time Roshan has died? I've just lost track at this point, and... This has just become... Crazy. So crazy. Illusion. Oh dear, Drow Ranger gonna push out this bot lane once again, right back into the Radiant base, and the Radiant are still trying to defend this. We're at the 75 minute mark. How many minutes are remaining in this? There's only another 15 minutes or so. God, there's another 15 minutes of this. Another 15 minutes of the Radiant going back and forth, and I can just close my eyes right now and practically fall asleep in my chair. But to be in all fairness, this match is actually <laughs> this match is actually pretty fun to watch. In the end of things, Drow Ranger gonna overstand once again. Drow gonna go down 90 second respawn time. Does she have buyback? No, she really doesn't. So that's not gonna be a luxury the Drow Ranger is going to have. Your Ranger is gonna fall down immediately. They now find out that Drow has two divine Ranger. They melt absolutely. Absolutely melt. Blink in from Slardar. BKB wears off. A single crit will seal the deal there. Another 4 out of 5 team member wipe. <laughs> the Dire now admitting it. GG being called by the Dire. The Radiant's still telling them to please push. That This is just... Oh my lord. So... The Radiant are either really bad at pushing, or that's what they wanted to do going into this game. And if that's what they wanted to do, if they wanted to be on the defensive the entire game, they accomplished that to an extreme degree. They came out of this with three Divine Rapiers on their side of the field. So many BKBs, I can't count. Multiple Aghanim Scepters. Kyle gonna get caught out by Nyx Assassin here. Gyro pushing very aggressively. He's got both of those BKBs. Black Cannon going to absolutely annihilate everything that stands in his way. And he's about to solo this tower. Is it, he's even backdooring it, no less. There's no time to wait for the creep wave, which Dyer's is about to come in here, actually. Fortified. Lift fortification coming out. Now the tower about to take actual damage here. It's gonna get eight shot, nine shot by Gyrocopter. The racks Dyer's are the exact same tower. story. That's Mid lane gone. just completely melted. It is gone. GG is being called by the Dire. And this is so far, far gone. It, they have a 30,000 gold advantage now, a 30,000 XP advantage now. Mid lane is just gone instantaneously. The Radiant, are they gonna are they seriously about to rotate out of this? Their ancient is completely exposed. There is nothing left in their base. Absolutely zip. Nothing. And the rate the tires still can't win this. That's how far this has gone. This is how bad this has gotten. Now Weaver just kind of dropping his ring of protection. No need for that anymore. Gonna push out this mid lane as much as he can, but now it's Mega Creeps against their own side as well, which is gonna free up the Radiant to push the other lanes much more aggressively. Slardar basically gonna solo this bot lane. Gyrocopter pushed out mid, at least or top, excuse me, temporarily. Though it is going to push right back in, and they're gonna get ready for another defense. They want the Dire to push in. They want to be on the defensive once again. 
And apparently someone said LOL in team chat, which I can't see. And unfortunately, that sound file does play to everyone. Now in comes the creep wave. Once again, Catapult going to get absolutely annihilated by Gyro. Weaver just sitting here thinking, what can I possibly do against a double divine Gyro? And the answer to that, well, you kill him and you get the divines. That's about the extent of what you can do. But at this point, it's so far flung that I'd be a amazed if they can actually get the kill. The Dyer don't even want to push in. They're trying not to push in. Weaver's gonna force their hand. He goes in, so the rest of them are gonna go in bot lane. Weaver's probably gonna go right back in here. He needs to support the team. He needs to try and split push this. PL in the meantime, still pushing this top lane. Gets caught up by the Knicks. Meteor drop comes in. Now in the meantime, Slardar down here in bot. Gonna scare off their entire team for that matter. Gyro back in mid here, just dealing as much damage as possible, and there's gonna be zero kills from this. The Dyer just fall back. They don't want to die. They realize that they still have a chance at this as long as they play their cards right. The Ancient is still fully exposed, although it is healing for that matter at a rate of 2.9 per second. In comes the creep wave once again. Weaver just right there. Warlock even asking, why don't you people leave? So I think that kind of explains the great they are just trying to defend this. As passively as they could. Slardar gets hooked in by Pudge and they still can't kill him. His mana is evaporated in moments. Now PL gets caught out top lane. He goes down. Pudge gets another hook on a creep this time. Invoker comes in. The side or the sheep gets popped on Weaver here. Weaver gonna go down almost instantaneously. Now Pudge trying to run away. Or no, just trying to stay in his own lane actually. He's trying to push in onto the high ground here. And at this point, it's simply not happening. Invoker going to deny that completely. Bot lane push gone. They're going to annihilate this bot creep wave. Mid creep wave in the meantime. About to push in here once again. Though it is mega creeps now. Here come the Radiant defending this once again. It's 86 to 32 right now. 86 to 32. There are more kills on the Radiant side alone than there are minutes in this match. The XP advantage, I don't even want to look at it, but I'm going to in a moment. There is almost a 30,000 gold advantage. XP advantage is actually still decreasing. It's been decreasing, which is a little weird, considering that they're the ones farming lane. So far. I guess we really have to turn the Dyer are just in lane farming a lot more at this point. Either way, here he comes. Nyx comes in. Lift up from Invoker to catch both of them. There's the Meteor Drop. Pudge going to force staff his way out of there. Kylo gets hit. He's going to take a lot of damage here. Slardar tries coming in. Sprint just not fast enough, apparently. And he's going to back off, go right back in the face to defend attack. his wave. Radiant structures a Golem Drop to kill what appears to be Drow Ranger here. That's a godlike Slardar at this point. It's now 87 to 32. Pudge gonna force staff himself out of trouble once again. That is a Mjolnir Slardar, and he wants to murder you as long as you let him. Now Swarm comes in here for Weaver once again, and the Dire they don't want to push this. They want to push the lane, but they don't want to get in harm's way. There's an 86 second respawn time on Coddle at this point. That is just absurd. And thankfully, there are only seven minutes remaining in the match. Drow Ranger now asking, why would we leave? Apparently deciding that even though they have such a severe disadvantage, they could still do this. And realistically, the Dire could still do this if the Radiant made one mistake. If they left their Ancient exposed, if they didn't push correctly, I mean, then it'll lead to the Radiant Ancient taking damage, and it'll lead to the Dire having an advantage once again. And when I say advantage, I don't mean Golden XP advantage, because I don't think the Dire will ever have that again. <laughs> It's gone so far against them, I really just can't see the way they'd ever have that again. An instant level 3 Necro book coming out on Invoker. Yeah, that's right, instant level 3 Necro book. Oh my, Crow Ranger respawning in 10 seconds. Coddle still down for another 30, and are there any buybacks on the Dire? There are no buybacks on the Dire team at this point. There's still plenty on the Radiant, so if anything were to happen... What? What? Oh. My. Lord. Oh my lord. That's just it. That's just simple how I'm going to put that. Oh my lord. I am going to follow this courier to its destination. D it, it, it <laughs> this gyro now does a hundred... No, not a hundred, excuse me. One thousand one hundred... 
No, 1,200 damage per right click. Do I need to say that again? 1,200 damage per right click. Dear Lord. How absurdly overpowered can you get? Boots of Travel now coming out on Coddle. Boots of Travel coming out on everyone, actually, because Boots of Travel, I mean, the Radiant are the ones who are really going to need Boots of Travel here. They need to push the lane, they need to be able to TP back on a whim, so Boots of Travel going to save them more than it is the Dire. The Dire is so, they don't want to push in, they don't want to risk dying, but they don't want to let the waves push out at the same time. They're trying to keep the Radiant pinned in their base, and the longer the Radiant farm gold, the longer they sit in their base, the more of an advantage they're going to get. They're up to a 30,000 gold advantage. They're down to a 20,000 XP advantage, and this is still going this way. Pudge gets caught out almost, but he's he does have that force staff, so he's able to force step himself out of trouble. And now he hooks the Slardar. Are you trying to kill yourself, Pudge? <laughs> wow, they are literally camping Roshan, just waiting for him to respawn at this point. That's how absurd this has gotten. That's how beyond belief this has gotten. Now, with only four minutes remaining on the clock, who will win this match? It's coming down to the line. The Radiant have become so absurdly farmed. The Dire have had them locked in their in their base with Mega Creeps the entire last, like, 30 minutes for that matter. This has gone above and beyond the call of absurdity, and this is reaching godlike proportions of being absurd. This has come to the situation where the Dire want to push the high ground, and they can't push the high ground. There aren't towers there to stop them, there aren't racks there to stop them, they have mega melee creeps, they have mega creeps, excuse me, and they're just afraid, they are afraid of the Radiant team. They don't want to get into an engagement with the Radiant team. That's how absurd this has gotten. This is how far gone this has gotten. Haste! I mean, there isn't really much else I can really say about this other than the Dire... <laughs> going into the last few minutes of this match, here's what it's going to come down to. If the Radiant get a good push, and they're able to push right up, there's only T4 towers in the way, and they are going to absolutely melt. But what that entails is they're going to have to push out the mid lane, and Gyro 3... Uh, or, yeah, 3 Divine Rapiers, he's going to do that almost instantaneously. It's going to be just creep waves melting in front of him. But if they go and they expose their base, if they let the Dire push in, or if they let the creep waves push in, then the Dire are going to have the opening they were looking for. Thankfully, there's so many boots to travel out, but they might not have the advantage at the end of things. And what's going to depend on is if they can get a good engagement. They're going to go for it. Pudge is just making a grab with the Ancient here. He's dealing damage. It's taking a lot of damage. Pudge himself is taking a lot. He goes down. Weaver comes in trying to... Or no, Peel comes in trying to do whatever he can. He goes down. Weaver's right there trying to kill the heroes. Actually, he should have gone for the Ancient. Drow goes down. Ancient still got two-thirds of its health. Weaver's gone. Now Coddle is the last remaining player. He's going to retreat, and this is the Radiant. They're going for it. They've had enough of this. They're going to leave a Slardar with a Divine Rapier, a Nyx Assassin, defend this. And this is going to be Gyro Warlock pushing out the mid lane. They're actually pursuing we er, Coddle here as if killing him wasn't humiliating enough. He gets picked up by Tornado, so that's a very dead Coddle. He's going to get two shot by Gyro. Mid lane's already pushing, and here we go. This is going to be the final push, most likely. The Dire, do they have any buyback? The Dire have no buyback. And they all have over 30 second respawns, and that's it. That's, I mean, realistically, this is GG. You know what? That, that's, just, that's what I'm going to say. This is finally GG. This is G to the fucking G. 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 Oh. Golem's getting dropped almost for effect at this point. He pops his refresher just to do that. Towers literally Dyer's melt. They're getting five shot fallen. by Gyro. And that is indeed. That is GG. That is the end to the 86 and a half minute game. Glyph getting popped at the last moment, going to make it 87 minutes, ending it 93 to 32. Leaving the Radiant with an over 30,000 XP advantage, 20,000 gold advantage, three, no, four Divine Rapiers on their team, more six slots than I know what to do with, and this entire match, this is... I don't even know how to describe this anymore. What I know how to describe this as, though, is even though this isn't competitive, this is going to be a Dota 2 match that is I going to stick in my secret. memory and will be remembered for a very long time, even as a caster. This is an incredibly, incredibly impressive match that it came to this. They had Mega Melee, or they had Mega Creeps for like 30 minutes and they failed to end the match. They failed to win this. 
that is just so, so over the top absurd. And for that reason, this match is always going to live on in my memory. Thank you guys for watching. My name has been Panksters, and I will see you tomorrow night.